Welcome to the Mantis Gardening World. We'd like to tell you about the new Mantis Tiller Cultivator and show you how it can make a world of difference to your garden. Of course, we can't show you everything in this one video. You'll find full information in the detailed instructions, including important safety information. So, once you've seen the video, please read through the instructions carefully. Let's take a good look at the Mantis Cultivator, which, as you'll see, is a rotary hoe or tiller and a lot more besides. This is the ground we'll be covering. First, assembly. Second, where to start. Third, how to use. And fourth, care and maintenance. Your cultivator comes pre-assembled. You just need to attach the handles. Do not remove the protective packaging from the cultivator at this point. Before assembly, let's check you have all the necessary parts. The motor element, two handles, two steering column parts, two hoe blades, the handle brace, a plastic carrying handle, and a packet of small parts such as nuts, bolts, and spanner, or spark plug wrench. You'll need two 11 mm wrenches or two adjustable wrenches. Start with the lower handles. The packing keeps the cultivator steady. Set out the nuts and bolts and joining pieces where you can see them. And start with this plate and one of the steering column sections which have a short angled end. Place the linking plate on the outside to line up with the holes in the tube. Take one of the long bolts and insert in the first hole. Now the second tube is slipped over the bolt and the second linking plate added on the other side. Secure the bolt with the nut, but don't tighten it up yet. The next step, just above the red protective guard, is the transmission case. Either side of this are semicircular cavities. Take the two tubes you've just bolted together and slide the angled ends into the cavities. Insert the second long bolt into the remaining hole and secure with a nut. Now you're ready to assemble the upper handles and the plastic carrying handle. In this step, we'll refer to the right lower handle. When you stand on the fuel tank side of the tiller, looking down at the engine, the right lower handle is the one closest to the cap. First, the carrying handle is fitted. This plastic part is slipped over the two tubes of the steering column. You'll need to press the two tubes together slightly. Now get the upper handle that's attached to the throttle cable and wire and attach it to the right lower handle. Next you'll need one of the round top bolts. Note that just below the round top the bolt has four sides. Slide the bolt into the square hole in the upper handle with the throttle making sure that the four sides of the bolt fit snugly into the hole so it doesn't turn. 
Hold the bolt in place while you insert it into the hole in the lower handle. Now get one of the two black handle knobs and screw it onto the bolt. Make sure the bolt stays seated in the square hole so it doesn't turn as you screw on the knob and tighten the knob securely by hand. Follow the same steps to install the other upper handle to the other lower handle. Use this clip to fasten the fuel drawer to the steering column. It's secured on both sides by a nut and bolt. Now bolt the handle brace in place through the holes provided. Check that the handles are correctly assembled. If you stand behind the cultivator and hold the throttle control, you should see the white fuel tank immediately in front of you. Once you're sure everything's assembled correctly, you can tighten up all the nuts and bolts. Make sure both handle knobs are tight and secure. Next, assemble the tines. Remove the cardboard packaging from the drive shaft. Each of the two sets of hoe blades has a spindle socket in the middle. Slip the blade element onto the spindle so that the flat side of the socket is on the outside. The points of the blades should face forward. Fasten the blade elements by inserting the fixing pins through the holes in the ends of the spindle. The hoe blades are now correctly attached. Later, we'll be going into further assembly details. In the meantime, you're ready to fuel the engine. Your Mantis cultivator is driven by a two-stroke motor with air cooling. It requires a fuel mixture of petrol and two-stroke engine oil. Never use just petrol on its own in your cultivator. Here's how to mix the oil and petrol. Pour 5 litres of petrol into a safe container. Add one bottle of Mantis two-stroke engine oil and mix. Always use a mixture of 50 parts lead-free regular grade petrol and one part two-stroke engine oil. If you don't, your engine will suffer rapid, permanent damage and you will void the engine warranty. When you need more engine oil, you can order it directly from your Mantis dealer. Now start your tiller for the first time. First, fill the tank with the fuel mixture, not forgetting to replace the tank cap. There's an on-off switch on the handle. Click the switch into the start position. Next, pull out the choke button. Now let's look at the fuel pump. This injects fuel into the carburetor to start the motor. Press the transparent bubble repeatedly until you see the fuel flowing through the line. Give the starter cord two or three short sharp pulls until the motor stutters. Then push the choke back in and pull the starter cord again. The motor should now start up. To turn off the motor, you just need to flick the switch into the stop position. If the motor doesn't stop immediately, pull out the choke. On the question of safety, even when the motor is running, the hoe blades will only turn if you press the throttle control. As soon as you release the throttle, the rotary blades stop immediately. Here's a tip. 
Before you start work with your cultivator, let the motor idle for a minute or two to warm up. And when you've finished using the cultivator, you should also let the motor run idle to cool down. This prolongs the life of the motor considerably. If you start your cultivator motor as we've described, you should have no problems. If your motor doesn't start up, here are a few useful tips that will help. Check, first of all, that the switch is in the start position. If you've been pulling the starter cord with the switch in the stop position, then the motor will probably have flooded. In this case, remove the lead from the spark plug. Use a 19mm wrench or a spark plug spanner to remove the spark plug. If the end of the plug is wet, dry it off with a paper towel or a clean cloth. Give the starter cord a couple of pulls and replace the spark plug, not forgetting to reattach the lead. Once the spark plug is back in place, you can try to start the motor again. The choke should be pressed in. After another two or three pulls on the starter cord, the choke should be pulled out again. The motor should now stutter. Now you can push the choke in again and the motor runs smoothly and cleanly. So much for the problem of a flooded motor. What do you do if the spark plug is dry, but the motor still doesn't turn over? In this case, it's nearly always the fuel supply that's interrupted or jammed. The fuel line runs directly from the fuel tank to the carburetor. If you pull the line out at the carburetor end, the fuel should slowly drip out as here. If this doesn't happen, check the line for any kinks. Kinks in the pipe interrupt the flow of fuel. This is easily put right. If too much fuel comes out, it could be that the filter has come off the end of the pipe in the fuel tank. Attach the filter to the pipe again and start your cultivator as usual. A warning at this point, never use starter sprays. They damage the motor and nullify the manufacturer's guarantee. Now let's go to the garden. Do you know your cultivator can go walk about? Slowly press the throttle control and let the cultivator head off to where it's needed. But there's another way too. Make sure the motor's switched off, then take hold of the steering column with one hand and the carrying handle with the other. The cultivator weighs just nine kilograms, so it's easy to move about. Never pick your cultivator up like this. The hoe blades can cause serious injury. Now you're ready to use your mantis tiller. You'll be surprised just how easy the cultivator is to use. It's most efficient if you pull the cultivator backwards. This increases the resistance on the hoe blades, making them dig deeper and better. First, pull the cultivator towards you, then let it run forwards a little. Its unique curved tines spin up to 240 revolutions per minute. Of course, tilling is just the beginning. Your cultivator copes with even tough roots. First, make sure the motor isn't running. Place the hoe blades in the hacking position. All you need to do is attach the right-hand blade to the left-hand spindle. so that the blades are pointing backwards. Don't forget to replace the fixing pin. Take the cultivator to the spot that needs hacking. 
and run the cultivator backwards and forwards over the trouble spot until the blades have split up the weed roots. Repeat the procedure until the soil is evenly broken up. This rocking movement chops up the roots and plows them in at the same time. You can do this even in tight corners without damaging your plants. Gardening made easy. Here are some tips that will help you get years of trouble-free service from your tiller. After about five working hours, the cultivator's air filter should be checked. Undo the thumb screw and carefully remove the air filter cover. This pad is the air filter. If it's damp or dirty, remove it. Any dirt is easily removed with a brush. Under no circumstances should you use solvent or detergent. If the filter is heavily soiled, it must be replaced. Fit the new filter on the inside of the choke housing, then replace the cover and secure it with the thumb screw. Once a year, you should check the transmission grease inside the transmission housing. To do this, unscrew the cover from the transmission housing. The grease should more or less fill the gearbox. If this isn't the case, you'll need to top it up with lithium lubricant. By the way, this is the only possibility of adding lubricant in the cultivator. Take care not to use too much lubricant. After the cultivator has been in use for some time, you should also check the fuel filter. Deposits of dirt can build up in the fuel tank and the filter. The filter is inside the tank. Remove any deposits in the tank, on the filter itself and in the fuel line. If your motor runs unevenly or stops frequently, the problem's usually in the carburetor. Once you've removed the cover, you see these two screws. The left-hand screw is marked H for high and the right-hand one L for low. Turn both screws in a clockwise direction until they reach the stop position. Then give each screw one full turn plus another half turn anti-clockwise. For this, the housing doesn't need to be removed, but the rotary blades do. Start the motor. For the right idling position, turn the L screw anti-clockwise until the motor runs absolutely evenly. The H screw is used to set a higher motor speed. Practice makes perfect here. Below the two L and H screws, you'll find the idling screw. The setting is correct when the spindle does not rotate in the idling position. First, find the small metal triangle at the end of the fuel drawer. The idling screw should touch the triangle. If the fuel drawer is too tight, there'll be a gap between the screw and the triangle. To correct this, loosen the nut at the top using a 10 mm spanner. Then pull the fuel drawer down until the gap is closed and tighten the lower nut again. Now we come to this copper piece. It's the swivel pin. The long end of the fuel drawer fits into the slit in the swivel pin. Again, the problem is quickly solved. The handles on your Mantis tiller conveniently fold down for easy storage and transport. 
Just loosen the two knobs where the lower and upper handles connect to each other. You can fold the handles forward so they rest on the lower handles, or you can fold them down and up against the lower handles. If you use this method, make sure you tighten the knobs so the folded upper handles stay in place. Your Mantis Tiller is now a compact little unit that's easy to carry, store or load in a car. At the end of the gardening season, there are one or two pointers to follow. First of all, empty the fuel tank. Then let the motor run until the remaining fuel is used up. Remove the spark plug. And pour a teaspoonful of clean two-stroke engine oil through the spark plug hole into the combustion chamber. Then pull the starter cord slowly three or four times to spread the oil evenly on the cylinder walls. Then screw the spark plug in again and put the cultivator away in this position in a clean, dry place. The handles can be folded or left extended. Next season, when you're ready to put your tiller back to work, take a few additional steps. If you've folded the handles for storage, put them back into the extended position and remember to tighten both handle knobs securely. Now screw out the spark plug once more and operate the starter cord several times. Remove any oil residue from the head of the spark plug and screw it in place again. Once you've filled the fuel tank, your cultivator is ready to be started as usual. The cultivator can be used for rotary hoeing as we've seen, but this is only one of the various uses it can be put to. This narrow blade element is particularly useful for furrowing. You just need to replace the supplied blade element. It's ideal for planting beans. You can also use it for setting bulbs or even for digging out holes. The mantis furrower is the ideal planting attachment for gardeners who want to form straight uniform furrows quickly and easily. The furrower connects to your mantis tiller in just a few minutes. The spinning tines propel the furrower forward. And the simple depth adjustment lets you form furrows that are the perfect depth for whatever you're planting. Try out the mantis border edger for yourself. It's one of our most popular accessories. Clean edges wherever you want them, along paths, round trees, shrubs and flower beds. Here again, you just need to swap the blades. And off you go. Now we'd like to show you a new way of cleaning out grooves and cracks. Mantis has developed this wire brush wheel specially for the purpose. It can easily be assembled on one of the cultivator's axles. An additional guide wheel is fixed on the other. The guard is extended by an additional section over the brush wheel. The Mantis Crevice Cleaner lets you remove weeds and dirt from any crack quickly and easily. The Crevice Cleaner has special wire brushes mounted on a steel disc. They powerfully clean out cracks in pavements and paths, including those which are otherwise difficult to get at. Also available as accessories are these transport wheels, which are a useful addition to the carrying handle, making it even easier to move your cultivator about. And the wheels provide additional stability when using various accessories. The transport wheels are simplicity itself to remove. If you want your lawn to look its very best, you should try the Mantis Dethatcher attachment. It quickly and powerfully removes moss and dead roots. Adding the attachment is again simplicity itself. Simply exchange the hoeing unit for the dethatcher. The steel claws should be in this position. These extra-wide guard plates are part of the D-thatcher, and you're ready to go. 
With the Mantis D Thatcher, you can transform your lawn into a wonderful carpet of green. Also try the Mantis Lawn Aerator. What it does is to cut tiny slits in the lawn so that air and nutrients can penetrate to the roots, making your lawn look healthier and fresher than ever before. Using the Universal Mantis motor, you can even cut hedges. All you need is the hedge trimmer attachment. The powerful combination of a strong motor and sharp trimming blades gives you an ideal garden tool. It's never been easier to cut shrubs and hedges just how you want them. The useful accessories make a perfect garden implement even better and more versatile. If you have any questions or would like to order any accessories, call your Mantis dealer. We're at your service. Mantis, for a garden world of difference.